I'd like to welcome all of our guests here to Morgan State University and the Center for the Built Environment and Infra <coughs> Infrastructure Studies. Um, I'm glad here that we have a beautiful day. I'm sure everybody is dry from the past three days. And I'm glad you have been able to navigate the potholes as well as the sinkholes to come here to Morgan State University. Um, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge um, some of the uh, important people here, as all of you are important, but some of our dignitaries are here in the office. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge President Daniels and President Wilson. Thank you for being here. I'd also like to acknowledge some of our uh, um, members of our administration. So Mr. Ray Vollmer, uh, Vice President for Finance and Management, Mr. Bick Janik, Assistant Vice President for Finance and Management. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Dean DeLoach, School of Engineering, Dean Alvin Kennedy, School of Computer, Natural Sciences, and Mathematics. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Dean Fikru Balkhasian, School of Business, um, I'd like to also acknowledge Dean Kim Sidnor, a School of Public Health and uh, uh, School of Community Health and Public Policy, as well as a graduate of the Johns Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. And I'd just like our faculty to raise their hand or stand up. And let's acknowledge them because they make us all great. Let's give them a round of applause. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the members of our board of our Morgan Community Mile, which is an initiative that we have in how we can partner with the community in terms of our knowledge uh, and our technology. Would you all please stand up and let's acknowledge them. And then I want to acknowledge a special guest and friend from the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, who is their inventor in residence. Uh, and member of the professional staff there, Dr. Richard Patember, will you please stand? And let's acknowledge him. So at this time, I'd like to give the podium to Dr. K.T. Ramesh, Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the Whiting School of Engineering, as well as the Director of the Hopkins Extreme Materials Institute. Let's welcome Dr. Ramesh. Thank you, Victor. Um, so let me start by um, thanking President Wilson for the opportunity to be here. Um, this is uh, quite a program that uh, Victor has uh, pulled together. Um, and maybe before I go too far into describing uh, the partnership, I should go around and uh, uh, recognize uh, the Hopkins participants, uh, at least some of them, uh, starting, of course, with uh, President Ron Daniels uh, right here. And he's going to go to speak in a moment. Uh, Dean Edge Schlesinger of the Whiting School of Engineering. Um, uh, let's see. Bob Camerata. Professor Bob Camerata is a professor of the uh, Department of Material Science and Engineering. He is one of the faculty advisors for the interns. We're going to talk about them in a moment. And then we have a number of participants from the Army here, starting with Dr. Joe Mate from the Army Research Lab. He is the chief scientist for the Army Research Lab. Colonel Brian Stevens from the Army Research Development and Engineering Command. Cindy Bedell, who is the person who runs the Enterprise for Multiscale Research of Materials at the Army Research Laboratory, and Dr. John Beatty, who is the, my counterpart in the Army Research Laboratory looking at materials in extreme dynamic environments. Uh, so thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to take a minute to talk about this partnership that we put together, this program that uh, we are here to celebrate. Um, so I run an institute at Hopkins called the Hopkins Extreme Materials Institute. Our interest is in looking at extreme events, things that happen too fast for most of us to see, but which have major impact. Um, so things that might be <coughs> very dangerous, uh, things that might be large impact problems, such as a car crash, or when an airline goes down, or an asteroid comes in, or when you're trying to build a bulletproof vest. Our interest is in the science that happens in those events. And one of the things we learned very early on is these are very complicated problems. And to be able to address them, you need a wide range of people. You need to bring together teams, sophisticated teams, to address complex problems. And that's what we've been trying to do. And part of this teaming is the program that we now have built with Morgan State. And let's talk a little bit about how this is structured. Um, what we do is we've got an internship program where um, the idea is that we have students who go through a research environment, build familiarity with the research environment over the very long term. So, 
you come in, you get started, you get exposed to what the research environment is, you work with very strong people, you're working on complicated problems, but the most important thing is to see that this takes time, that it builds up over a significant period, and you learn a way of thinking. Our objective is really to develop the people who will help change the world, the way in which we think about things. This is what scientists and engineers do. So that's our target here. Um, and we think we have some amazing students to help us with that. You will hear from one of them in a moment. And so with that, uh, let me give the floor back to Victor Hill. Picking up on uh, KT's remarks, I want to say that this is not just a signing ceremony, but it's also the start at, to develop a real partnership. And let me tell you about just a story about the, how this all started in the sense that about two years ago, KT and I met uh, when he was putting in this proposal and said, look, I need some advice on how do we bring other institutions to partner. And we talked then. Um, this was when I was with the Applied Physics Laboratory. And then uh, with last year, he called me and said, hey, look, we won, we did well. I'd like to talk to you about how Morgan can come along. Now, I tell you that story not just to say how we met, but to say the importance and power of relationships. And I see this relationship as really blossoming, not only in terms of our students that will be working with the Hopkins Extreme Material Institute, but with other parts of Johns Hopkins. So I really welcome this opportunity. Now it's time for me to welcome President Ronald Daniels. As you know, he is the 14th president of Johns Hopkins University, succeeding William Brody. And he had three things that are very important that he wanted to bring and brings to the Johns Hopkins University. That is fostering individual excellence, the power of one university, and the university's commitment to its communities. President Daniels was previously the provost at the University of Pennsylvania, as well as he was at the University of Toronto Faculty of Law. Let's all please give President Daniels a hearty Morgan welcome. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Victor, for that very warm introduction. It is truly great to be here on such a really joyous day. And uh, I'm so glad that we're here to be able to celebrate publicly uh, this extraordinary internship program. I have to confess that I've been thinking a lot over the last several days about the network of links that connect Johns Hopkins and Morgan State. And I should say, that uh, at least my exposure to Morgan State goes back a few years when uh, one of the first responsibilities I had as president was to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Wilson to the Homewood community on our campus. And um, David, in his characteristic way, gave an absolutely stirring speech about the role of the university in the community, its capacity to make a fundamental difference in the lives of its students and faculty, but of course the broader community of which it's part. And for me, that was a signal moment because I saw what a great friend, uh, what a great soulmate I would have as we start to think about things that we could do together to help uh, Baltimore along. And so it's really nice to say that uh, from that meeting, from that great uh, uh, speech that David gave, um, We've had a number of opportunities to do things together. In February, I stood beside Dr. Wilson to formally cut the ribbon on the Henderson Hopkins School in East Baltimore. It's an extraordinary, as you know, K-8 program, K-8 public school, that is operated uh, through a collaboration between our two schools of education. In March, I sat beside Dr. Wilson in Annapolis as we testified in support of two bills to promote innovation in Maryland and to provide additional tools to build healthy communities around our campuses. And today, we gather to formally establish this program, building a pipeline connecting talented Morgan engineers with Johns Hopkins and other major research institutions and tech companies. Um, as the rest of the year unfolds, uh, David, I can't help but wonder what our next act is to do together. And I know that uh, there'll be more to come. The fact is that there is a network of connections, as has been alluded to earlier in the remarks of KT and Victor, forming at all levels between our institutions. Our faculty members are coming together to enhance STEM education in Baltimore elementary schools. 
our researchers are joining under NIH funding to promote racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic diversity in reproductive science research. Our film students have been working together for the past eight years to serve as first readers for the Baltimore Screenwriters Competition. And this is just an abbreviated list of the connections we have. To me, this is more than just a solid array of programs or partnerships. It is a growing web of connections that serve to advance critical research and to make our community, to make our city stronger. The extreme science internships fit precisely, fit perfectly into this model. They will advance our understanding of extreme materials today and far into the future as the discoveries of these extraordinary young engineers deepens and progresses. But these internships with their focus on building a pipeline that starts right here, right here in Baltimore, are also building the strength of our community. And here I want to offer my very heartfelt thanks to KT Ramesh and his colleagues at HEMI and to Victor McCreary and his team for making this program a reality. It's a wonderful partnership that you have forged. And I want to, on behalf of all of us at Johns Hopkins, no pressure for your remarks that are soon to come, Jamie, <laughs> but to give my best wishes to Jamie Starkiel and his uh, colleagues in the very first uh, class of extreme science interns. I know you're gonna have a wonderful summer, and I know, I know uh, that you're just off to a truly dazzling career in science, and we look forward to all that you're going to do. With that, I um, want to turn the podium back to Victor. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Uh, thank you, President Daniels, for those really, really inspiring remarks. Um, it is my pleasure to now introduce President David Wilson, who is the 12th president of Morgan State University and comes to us from the University of Wisconsin, where he was there the chancellor for the extension program, as well as the vice president for university outreach and associate provost at Auburn and the associate provost at Rutgers. But besides just giving you a little bit of, of bio, um, Dr. Wilson's tenure here, which started in 2010, has really been marked by numbers of achievements, but also very impressive by his commitment and the commitment that he has asked the faculty and the staff in terms of student success. And some of those things mirror some remarks earlier in terms of student success, expanding our research capabilities as we are Maryland's premier public urban research institution, and then also outreach to our community, and that comes in the form of the Morgan Community Mile. Um, but also another thing that's really important, if you know Dr. Wilson, it's all about opening your arms and building partnerships. It's all about reaching outside our boundaries here, outside our um, places of comfort in order to embrace one another, embrace our neighbors, embrace other anchoring institutions in order to solve the problems that ch challenge us and that we face as a world. So I don't have to remind you, but I will remind you again, let's give a hearty welcome to our president, President David Wilson. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Victor, for uh, those kind words uh, of introduction. Uh, let me first of all uh, say to President Ron Daniels from Johns Hopkins, welcome to Morgan, Ron. Um, you know, uh, when I uh, came to the presidency here at Morgan, um, President Daniels indicated how he had reached out to me. But what he did not say was that he went even further than uh, what he had said. Um, uh, he uh, ended up having at his home on the Hopkins campus uh, two receptions, as you recall, Ron, where uh, he made it a point to ensure that I, as the president at Morgan, uh, had an opportunity uh, to engage other individuals around the city of Baltimore. And I really am appreciative to the way he extended his arms to me uh, in friendship and in partnership uh, between Morgan State University and the Johns, Johns Hopkins uh, University. So um, with that said, uh, this is truly a special day. It's a special day for Johns Hopkins. It's a special day for Morgan. It is a very, very special day for seven of our students this year. On 
yesterday, and I'll tell you why it is a special day in all of those areas, but on yesterday, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to deliver um, a speech uh, to the American Association for the Advancement of Science uh, at their uh, annual forum on science and technology policy. And I titled that speech, The Global Frontier, uh, how uh, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, uh, must be at the epicenter of what we heard repeatedly throughout the day on yesterday of filling the innovation gap in this country if indeed we are going to be competitive as a nation in 15 to 20 years from now. Because I don't know if we're paying enough attention to the shifting demographics in this country, but they are absolutely shifting so rapidly. And in the distant future, I mean in the not too distant future, uh, we will have a country that is brown. Uh, we will have a country that is comprised increasingly of the uh, Latino population uh, and African American population. And as we look at those growth populations and we look at where students are in science and where students are in math, um, we have a lot of work to do to make sure that we are producing those innovators of the future. And so this particular partnership between these two institutions is really enabling these young people who will have these great internships at Hopkins and at Hopkins Partners an opportunity to gain some great experience, you know, to be in incredible laboratories, to work alongside some incredible professors here at Morgan, at Hopkins, and at those partner institutions. And I am absolutely convinced that this particular program is one answer to what we heard on yesterday about that innovation deficit. And so we are delighted to continue to develop these strategic partnerships with Hopkins. Uh, President Daniels indicated that you know, we're coming down, if you will, a great road together. Uh, yes, I was really impressed with the kind of investments that uh, Hopkins made in bringing online the Henderson Hopkins School. That really, really was an incredible statement about how that institution uh, viewed its role in ensuring that the younger individuals in this city will have access to a world-class education. And we here at Morgan were very delighted to be uh, consulted and to be a part of that effort. Then, I guess um, around about three years ago, uh, we had an opportunity to partner again. And, and this time it was uh, in a program that we call Guest Star, the uh, NASA uh, Space uh, God of Space Center. And we came away from that effort as well, you know, with about $28 million in a contract over five years, of which Morgan, Hopkins, and USRA, and that is really moving along and is allowing this institution to develop expertise in uh, areas that we had not had before. And so we're really appreciative to that. And today, the extreme science. I mean, that is just a coup de gras. And we are delighted to continue down this path because we understand um, that the problems are so complex today that no single institution can go at it alone. And so collaborations are extraordinarily important. And this, of course, uh, is a great example of those collaborations. And so, I don't want to belabor uh, uh, my remarks here, but uh, I want to uh, conclude by introducing uh, a young man who uh, actually uh, you will uh, uh, see uh, why we are so excited about the future. Uh, I have had an opportunity to get to know Jamie, uh, I guess now for over a year or, or so. Uh, and I got to know him first, not in his role as uh, an engineering physics major uh, here at Morgan, but in his role uh, as uh, a member of our Honda Academic All-Star Team. Uh, that Honda Academic All-Star Team had won back-to-back -back championships in the national competition, 
and I basically uh, was a, a very, very curious as to how this new team that was being formed was going to compete after two teams had won the national championship. And so uh, I would peep in on their practices, and I was so impressed with Jamie. Uh, and I saw the way he comported himself on campus and the seriousness with which he was taking all of his academic studies here at Morgan. And I knew that we had something very, very special. And so uh, Jamie is um, a product of the Baltimore Public Schools. Uh, he actually finished a, a poly. Uh, he is a junior engineering physics honor student uh, here at Morgan State University. Uh, he is currently the president of the Society of Physics Students, and he is an active member of several honor societies here at Morgan. He's also, as I said, a member of that Honda Academic All-Star Team, and they absolutely went out to the Honda Corporation in Torrance, California, and made all of us very, very proud again. And last summer, uh, Jamie took part in an internship uh, at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center working with the Next Generation X-Ray Optics Technology Development Project. And then just recently, he was named a National Innovation Fellow through the University Innovation Fellows Program run by the National Center for Engineering Pathways to Innovation Epicenter, which is funded by the National Science Foundation and directed by Stanford University and the National Collegiate Inventors and Inventors Alliance. And so it gives me a great, great pleasure uh, to bring before you an individual who will be the recipient of all that we are talking about today, Jun junior physics engineering major here, Jamie Arribas Stockiel. Jamie. Thank you for that great introduction, President Wilson. Uh, good morning, members and friends of the Morgan and Johns Hopkins communities. It is a privilege for me to be standing here in front of you today. To all who have made this opportunity possible, I thank you. It is an honor to take part in the Extreme Science Internship Program. At the crossroads of science and technology lies material science, the study of structure that bridges the gap between natural sciences and technological applications. This summer, my colleagues and I will also be at a crossroads. We will have a unique opportunity to test drive our future at some of the top research establishments in the world. Here, we will take the next step in our career paths, opening the gates to graduate school and um, employment opportunities. We will build invaluable relationships and conduct research under the mentorship of some of the top practicing scientists in the world. We will make meaningful contributions to science and we will have hands-on experience with extreme materials. Personally, I'll be spending my summer at Caltech, where I strive to enroll in a top graduate program in physics or engineering. I would like to draw from an excerpt by Richard Feynman, renowned American theoretical physicist and Caltech professor. We are at the very beginning of time for the human race. It is not unreasonable that we grapple with problems. But there are tens of thousands of years in the future. Our responsibility is to do what we can, learn what we can, improve the solutions, and pass them on. So on behalf of all the ESI students, we are thankful, President Wilson and President Daniels, thankful for the chance to carry out this responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie, that was wonderful. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge that time, Will, the students who are part of the first cohort of ESI, of the ESI program, please stand up as well as Dr. Kennedy and Dr. Aslan, and let's give them a round of applause. I also just have some other acknowledgements, and you'll see where I'm going with this story. Um, the executive program director, Victor Nakano, and I have worked closely together, and I really appreciate your help and KT putting this together. But he and I traded some war stories, and um, he said, you know, I noticed that your shoes are always polished. And I said, well, you know, when we had to go to church the next day, 
my mother beforehand made sure we polished our shoes and made sure that all of our clothes were laid out. And he said, well, why is that? I said, well, my mom was a first lieutenant in the Army. My dad was a master sergeant in the Army. I was born at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. My undergraduate education was funded by the Army. My graduate education was funded by? Army. Say it louder. And so behind all of this, you have to have a real commitment, not only in resources, but I have a commitment in mission. Because what I was taught about from my parents is that everything you do, Victor, has to have a mission, have to have a goal, have to have a con ops, and you have to follow through. And so I'd like the folks from the Army to stand because they are really behind this Extreme Materials Institute program. They're also making it possible for the ESI here. I'd like you to stand and let's give them a long round of applause. Hoo-ha! <laughs> And also, before we just move on, I want to acknowledge some other folks who are just here who, makes this, who have made this happen. First of all, I want to thank all the video folks and the media people who have come out. I want to thank our staff who have helped, Clint Coleman, Jarrett Carter, Abe Maurer, Alan Small, and, and all the rest of the faculty and the Division of Research and Economic Development staff. I also want to thank you, Tracy, and Lisa, for your help, you've made it happen. Let's give these folks a round of applause. And so now we come to the most important part of the ceremony. And that is about six months ago, we, after many rounds talking about this, and of course, KT coming over to our Helen Roberts dining hall where we have Southern cuisine on Thursdays, and he kept coming on Thursdays, insisted to talk because we have a buffet, where we've really hashed out the details of this program. And so now what we wanted to do is put the final conclusion of that, and what I would like to ask is that the two presidents, please bring your chairs forward. We have six copies of the memorandum of agreement, and we're gonna ask them right now as part of the ceremony to sign all documents and pieces of exchange. You make you, you make that all now. That's right, you have to You may now put the caps on. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause. I will now ask uh, KT to join me at the podium and at this time we'll be opened for any questions and answers followed by a brief reception in that room. So, any questions from the audience? I, I know I stand between you and lunch. So. <laughs> but it's not Thursday. That's, ah, <laughs> it's not Thursday. By the way, this is the first cohort of students that will be going this summer. 
Did you also have any remarks, KT, that you wanted to say? I, I think you said it all. This okay. I, I think we yes. have one here. Please. We've got a variety of them. Um, Caltech, as you heard from Jamie, uh, one to the Ernst Mark Institute in Germany. And actually, I have a list. I can I think I have the list. Or maybe I don't have the list here. Um, we've got a, several coming to Hopkins. I think there are three coming to Hopkins. Um, Victor, we, there's one more. There are two at Caltech, right. And Drex, one at Drex. Thank you. And one thing that's unique uh, uh, about the program also is a couple of students actually will also sometimes we'll do the internship the right here on site so that they can get that faculty research experience, particularly some of the younger students will come in. But also this also helps with the faculty getting involved because we have big ideas. Of course, that's going to be another luncheon uh, <laughs> at the Helen Roberts of where, how we do PI-PI collaborations. So, so uh, as Victor was saying, there's an internal program as well as an external program. And sometimes you have to get through the internal program before you can get to the external program. Uh, the external program has um, 14 universities, 14 institutions, including the Army Research Lab, and generally the efforts involve science that is funded by the Army Research Lab on programs in Mead. So they're all correlated in some way. Any more questions, please, in the back. They, they can recur, you can have, so, so the idea is to get into the research program, and often you want to come back to do that. So the programs might be as little as three weeks up through eight weeks, a whole summer might roll into the semester. Yeah. It's different for each student, depending on the directions you're going. What we envision is hopefully that this will be rolling internships throughout the year, so when you have the winter break, uh, students will be allowed for two weeks to go participate in an internship, also maybe for the spring break and also not only just restricted to undergraduates, but eventually graduate students too. Any other questions? Okay, well with that, we have refreshments over here. Uh, we'll be staying around. We'd like to invite the Army, as well as the students and the deans to come up for some photo ops, uh, and then please help yourself. Thank you very much.